more at your mental health. Oh my god. Hello. Hello. We got this. Oh my gosh, you guys. Welcome to True Mental Health with your lovely hosts. I'm not even gonna say our names today because I always fuck it up. Uh, <laughs> Who are we? I don't know. Hey. <sighs> So, you know, like we are always kind of winging it with topics and both of us are facilitating and introducing more business classes and programs into the world. And so I was like, what if we talk about, you know, something about questions? Because last week we were like, how the hell do you ask a question? Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, talk about questions in business, because I know you and I both, this is kind of how we create business is we choose and we ask questions and then we choose and we ask questions and that's how our business gets created. So, yeah, yeah, I was looking at like, how do you market that? Ask questions, ask your business <laughs> fucking questions. Okay. Well, I think last week's conversation is so key. And if you guys didn't catch yeah. it, um, I swear to God, we are going to get this put up into a podcast one day, but until then YouTube yep, and here, just oh, like turn the video off and listen to it. Cause the video was terrible, but it was that like, how do you, how do you even ask a question? What is a true question? You know, so add that to this conversation. Um, my gosh, what if we started with like, okay, how are you playing with this in real time present day? So much, so much. So um, I'm really getting just, you know, this whole idea of question is to, hmm, I mean, create more ease, right? If we're seeing how it's related to mental health for me to get yeah. out of conclusion, get out of judgment, which is going to activate my nervous system, right? So this is kind of my whole process. I'm asking questions lately because I'm shopping for a house. We're moving um, to like north of Dallas area, Frisco area. And what a process because I'm really tapping into like the energy of the market. There's a lot of frenzy here in the U.S. Um, and a lot of multiple offers going way over asking. And just you can just feel it. It's so palpable. And so I've really set my intention to s- detach from that. What what could I create here? What if I didn't have to be at effect of the market? What could show up? And so I had to be pretty aggressive with myself and asking these questions because I just, my nervous system was like, (sighs) you know, it's like, see house, 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 house. And like, but that also facilitates so much ease when I could walk in and be like, is it this? Yes or no? I was like, nope. Okay. I could just turn around and, and be done. So it just facilitates such speed with it. Okay. Now, one of the things I think is worth exploring a little bit more is that one, you asked a yes, no question. And then number two, you followed it quickly. That's yeah. maybe the three things. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there was some times where I was like, oh, maybe I should just make the pleasantries with, you know, the selling agent who's yeah. there. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, yeah. How can you know that fast? You know? Yeah. And actually you and I had a lot of those conversations in the beginning of like, you can that fast because you know like one of us would be twisted in something and i'd be like well let's just ask a yes no question and then we'll get the awareness and it is kind of jarring in the very beginning to get that you can get an awareness on some whether something's going to work um whether it's for now or the future uh instantaneously you can just know and so i think this is i mean this is the thing like we kind of rob ourselves of constantly with overthinking and i see this happen in business more than anything which to me is like you know, that's the sign that you're going down the drain into a land where you're not going to thrive. That's mm-hmm. where mental health does not live. That's like mm-hmm. overthinking, worrying, stressing about things, controlling things into existence. I mean, these are all things I've definitely done. Maybe you've mm-hmm. done. <laughs> Massive control. Yeah. And it's literally like my body hurts. I actually, yeah. so I've been creating this business for, I don't know, actively probably five, six years. Um, and it's, I mean, in the middle of creating my business, I've also like changed multiple things in my life. So there's just been so many different ups and downs, but I had a year where I was like really intense, like business is like exponentializing this year. And so I just like went for it and I was just working constantly, which is okay on the one hand, cause I really, really do enjoy working. Yeah. But I was also doing this thing where I was going to, I was going to force or control these results that I wanted into existence. And by the end of that year, I had like carpal tunnel in my wrist. Um, I was just, I was white. I was little, I was just tapped. And there was a lot of joy in the middle of all of that too, but the cumulative effects of like not asking my body anything, um, not including my body, which is also like living as the question is like, you know, 
or what can I choose today? And sometimes that could have been my body, but I never asked. Yeah. And and so like the effects of not really including and not asking were were just really hard on me. And that next year I made a really big demand of myself that um that what and I asked a question. I'm like, what would it take to have double the revenue with half the effort? I just was like my favorite this. question. <laughs> What would it take to have double the revenue with half the work? And so that next year, I I think I did like a third of the work. And I mm. didn't my revenue didn't double, but I did a third of the work and it's and it went up still. Like, and I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. Cause apparently when you ask a question, something changes. So <laughs> don't ask. Yeah, that apparently, question. yeah, don't ask it. No, I, I love that. Just because I'm seeing how I had a parallel parallel experience where I was just like working really hard to make things happen and then kind of made the demand of relaxation because I was like this is not sustainable nor is this fun I mean same I like to work a lot but not in the not in the energy of like have to or force to make something happen um I'm really stuck on something you said earlier regarding like asking the question and it can be so jarring how fast it is because it's like it's almost like we don't always have the willingness to want to hear the information that's coming through the download. Yeah. It's like, but that doesn't match what I've already decided and concluded is right. So I can't. Yeah. And then we reject it. And then well, what awareness does is it opens up the possibilities and it opens up you to the possibilities. And there are so many instantaneous possibilities and there's so much instantaneous information we can get. And so I use questions two ways. I use it one to get an awareness, maybe three, I don't know. I use it to get an awareness of the future that my choice will create, which is a totally other conversation. Like mm. if I choose this, what's the future like is one of the ways I use questions to get a sense of that. I use questions in another way to get um, just the information of like timing of mm -hmm. things. Like is this for now or later? Cause, yeah. but I, that comes from an awareness of how I function, which I think a lot of us don't know, which is that, I get awareness of all time. Time is a construct. Like we made that up. So past doesn't exist. Present is just like, okay, right. The second and future is a possibility, but somewhere we've made time much real. more different than it's real. Odd. Yeah. Yeah. So I use, yeah. So I'll use it to get a sense of timing because all of that blends together for me. And mm -hmm. I know that. And, and then I also use questions to generate new possibilities. Like what would it take for da 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 da, da with ease, you know, so that, the universe can contribute something to me and I don't have to work so fucking hard. Yeah. Um, and so also like I'm contributed ideas and energies and like, it's just this invitation to this infinite universe to make my life easier. But I get that it all comes from like, whatever it takes, I'm going to have ease. Like, yeah. And kind of what I'm getting to is like, there's with the questions, it's almost like you're out of definition of, how the thing shows up or what it looks like. Cause I was thinking also with like the houses, I was doing the same thing, asking questions with like pricing or, you know, whatever the things you put on, on your offer and whatnot and yeah, all those numbers yeah. and choosing. And I was just kind of like, well, what's going to create the greatest here, not what's going to get me the house. Right. Yeah. Because if I've decided this is the house and I can only have this one, yep. then that would, I was like, versus what else is possible? What if there's something greater out there? I'm like, universe, this house are better. Show me. And then tell, you know, kind of like what price will create the greatest. And it was like just paying them in $10,000 increments or whatever. Um, yeah. And then I was just picking what popped. Yeah. Well, this is where I, I get, again, this is such a mental health conversation because it's <laughs> like when you box yourself into like, I have to get this particular result you then have to bend and fold and staple and mutilate yourself to fit whatever it is you've decided is required to get that result. And so always the person that loses is you. And yeah. when I, and, and it was a really interesting, I had an interesting process on many levels when I first found access, but one of the things that was palpable in my world is that I would get fixated. I would get fixated on a particular way something had to be done. And, and I, it's hard for me to even remember this now, but looking back, this was a huge thing. I get fixated and then literally like be like almost like so blind to anything else that it, there, mm -hmm. there wasn't anything else. And then when somebody would say, somebody would say something, you know, this is in the beginning where I was starting to kind of come out of this incredible amount of control I'd been doing and coping and survival, you know, starting to get that there was another way to live. 
and somebody would say something and it would literally like like pop open the box in my head and I'd be like, oh. And I remember actually saying something to myself once very consciously. I was like, I need to remember that there's always other ways of things occurring. Like, mm -hmm. I want to remember this. I want to remember this. I want to remember this. Because somewhere in my world, that had gotten, like, beaten out. Like, there just yeah. was only ever one way. And, and, I mean, if you look at the way kind of we're raised or how I was raised in religion, religion, I guess, in particular does this, where, you know, it's like there's one way to God. There's one way for this. There's one way for this. It's, it's, it's understandable to get how we could, like, come to a conversation like this very, very, um, I don't know, trained or, yeah. you know programmed yeah programmed yeah and it's like so i really wanted to remember because it literally just wasn't in my world that there could be multiple ways for things to show up like and so that may be where some of some of you guys are starting you know of mm -hmm. and this is where i think you know last week's conversation is such a gift because you can really can start with one question and go well then what yeah. else is possible that i haven't considered like just add that one thing and that's going to like pop the lid off of wherever it is you've just like driven towards a particular thing, you know, and and not even considered that there could be anything else. So I love what you said. Um, it reminds me of like, oh, what's that experiment? I don't know if it was like with jumping fleas or something, but like some sort of insect that jumps to like six feet naturally. But then if they're put in a box, uh, that's like yeah. at three feet. And then they just start learning. Well, that's the limit. That's the ceiling. That's right. the ceiling. And you take right. the ceiling off and then they're, they're still, still jump jumping. Yeah. And like that. I was <laughs> right. And so it's like, how much do we impose that on ourselves? And I saw that with I was like, OK, all of a sudden I was like, I want a pool. I really love a pool. And so I'm going to look at pool houses. But I realized, well, again, that's a conclusion because it's like, well, what else is possible? Like, what if somewhere had an amazing yard and I could put in a pool or we didn't need a second car? So it'd be very easy to, you know, put funds towards a pool if we were close enough to my husband's work. So but having that option open, being in question of what would it take to have a pool yeah. doesn't mean the house already comes with a pool. Do you know what I'm saying? No. And the other thing that's interesting about this that I don't even think you and I have talked about is that your awareness. So if you even if you like kind of stepped back and looked at, okay, what energies, if you stepped back and looked at the energies that a pool added mm. to your life, to your business, to, and you were like, oh, that, you know, a lot of times we think that when we see something or a clothing piece or a car or a color or a house or something, that it's that particular specificity that, oh, that's the thing, that's the thing, yeah. you know, and so we get hooked on the, the particular, the specific Yep. When if you wouldn't if you even looked at like what what energies did having a pool add to your life and living you might actually get a whole broader spectrum of how all of those energies could show up in your life that you really mm -hmm. haven't considered, mm -hmm. including a pool but not exclusively limited to a pool. Yeah, and and this is where when we exclude the information that we're actually aware of energy, we speak energy that everything has energy, then we're we're kind of crippled because because we then get hooked on the what it looks like rather than the what it be like, which is the what it be like is what allows our, you know, our life and our business to expand. And this is where it kind of circles back around to question of like, question opens you up to what it be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you can't, you can't get on grab onto the specifics of it because it's just, it invites uh, energy a vibration, a sensation that you're having that it's almost not like, well, I want this very specific sink and poles in the kitchen and that's it right you know it's just kind of like well what if something else was possible and how everything came together or what if the yard wasn't just a pool but this like amazing oasis of like plants and you know a speaker system that sounded like a resort you know, it's just like all those things that come together to mm, fuel what it is i mean and i just getting that it's like again it's like hard to even put words to because it's like the question just create something that I can't even put my head around. Like I can't even well, describe it's it. not a head reality. You literally yeah. cannot put your head around. It actually takes you into the being, knowing, perceiving and receiving yeah. reality. Yeah. So if you're trying to get into your head with it, you're trying to fit a consciousness invitation into a linear construct. And that's yeah. why it doesn't work because you can't get your head around it. So the only thing you can do with questions is add them to your life and then see what occurs. And mm -hmm which to me in the beginning was a, was a mind it was same here, same here. I was like, I really struggled with that. Cause I love being in my Give me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so supposed to I get have, a result. <laughs> uh -huh. 
So I had to practice something different. And the interesting thing is you can use questions to, you can and should, I would use questions to stimulate different possibilities in your yeah. world. Yeah, It's different though, looking at stimulating different possibilities and trying to achieve a result. And that's where you kind of got to look at what you're, where you're functioning mm. from with this, because trying to achieve a result mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. can occur. And you've got to look at is it does is it holistically caring for you in all respects or are in somewhere in going for this particular result? Are you losing you in some way? Are you losing care for your body? Are you losing, you know, have you not considered, have you considered all of you? So what I find quest the question choice possibility reality does is it includes all of me. I get to include my body, the way I want to live, the way I want to have my relationships, the way it includes everything all yeah. of my awareness, all of the universe. It's an inclusive universe. And so, you know, so you can stimulate more money in your world. What would it take for more money to show up with total ease? I just had, I just did it again yesterday, two days ago. You know how I get private clients? You know my technique? Yeah. It's very secret. Take... <laughs> this is how I get private clients, yeah. you guys. I use a big funnel. No. Yeah. <laughs> I go, what would it take for more private clients to show up with ease? literally mm -hmm. within two to three days, I have somebody messaging me buying a package. Literally. You have the fast pass on the questions. Yeah. <laughs> so I did it again. Uh, so I've been busy writing my first book. Oh, so man. I'm like 32,000 words in. We're like almost to the 50,000. Wow, that's so, so exciting. Cool. And I've really had my head done. Like that's kind of where a lot of my energy is going. So I, was, I just was like, ah, what would it take for more private clients to show up with these? Remembering again, I can ask. Sure enough, yesterday, somebody booked an hour session, which in my, you know, just like with, I don't even know her. I don't know how she found me. She just booked it. Love There's it. $750 sitting in my account. You know, this is the thing about questions is like, if you remember that everything supports you, you can invite it to support you. Yeah. Well, and what I'm getting from what you said earlier, it's like kind of like the result is the happy byproduct, but that's not what I'm going for. It's like versus going for the stimulation of possibilities and kind of almost like allowance for things to show up. Totally. And it's like, I want to kind of throw back to what you said. You said something, say that again. Can you start where you said? Hopefully. Nope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so the results are a happy byproduct. So I'm saying, like, yes. I'm not going and for the And you can results. still have what you want. So yeah. this is the thing. It's like, you. <laughs> this is the thing I think is so interesting to talk about because it's like, you got to kind of look at if if you want to have something different. So let's say, I don't know, you've I've talked about this so much. Like, are you going for it? Because you'll get frustrated. I'm like, well, are you going for results? And you're like, yes. And I find myself doing it too. Yeah, it could be like social media numbers or a financial result or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, if it's not really working the way you want, or if you're like getting bent out of shape, this is the thing, you're you're gonna get um, indications that you're bending and twisting yourself by how it's affecting you, kind of, you know, the yeah. symptoms that are showing up. So if you're not yeah. thriving, if you're like not ease, joy and glory, you're doing something else. So it's like, okay, so what are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. And once you start to kind of, again, a question. So you start to kind of dive into what you're doing because you've decided you need to do it but you kind of break it apart and go, well, what are you doing this for? Like, what is it oh, you want yeah. to achieve? And then you kind of drill down. Well, I'm doing it for this. Okay. But for what reason? Well, I'm doing it for this. Well, for what reason? When you really allow yourself to kind of get down to what's truly motivating you, it's very likely that what you're really wanting to create is like life worth living or change yeah. in the world or freedom, you know, freedom to choose or a bigger menu of yeah. choice with more money. Yeah. That's the energy. And that's what we miss out on and we don't get to function from when we decide that we're going for a particular result. We see something that we want to have and then we go to a conclusion yeah. about what it's going to take to have it. And then we try to force that conclusion into existence. And then the person that gets mutilated in the process is always us. And it doesn't mm -hmm. work as well. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like you can work this process kind of different directions. You can like remember to start asking more questions. Yes. You can also kind of pay attention to where you're not really thriving in your life and in your business and ask that some more questions. It's like, what am I trying to achieve here? Is yeah. it working? Is it <laughs> <That's great question. laughs> it's funny because it's like so simple, but yet how much do we just like, is it working? Well, like, you know what I mean? We don't even ask it. We don't even think to ask it. And really, and, 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 it does, and I have to be honest, it takes a pretty, this takes a level of vulnerability with yourself because yeah. You really do have to be willing to kind of engage with you as somebody who is out there just creating. You mm -hmm. have a brush on the canvas and you're like 
slapping paint around and here you are. And now you got to step back and kind of like, okay, how's this going? Well, okay. And would you also say that like, it's not like, okay, you act, ask questions today and then you're good. You're good for the, the rest of the year or the rest of your business. It's like, no, what I noticed, especially with the house stuff, things every hour were changing or I just kind of stayed tapped in to one. And then all of a sudden it kind of took a, a small left turn. I was like, huh, something changed. Not sure yet, but it's like, I just, and so it's like asking a question again, because if I just stuck with my first awareness, then you know what I mean? I'd already be like locked into that again, like kind of that tunnel vision versus continue. Yeah. Well, you would have taken your awareness and made it into a conclusion. Yes. Oh yes. I'm very good at that. <laughs> Me too. I'm so <laughs> Even this morning I was talking to my partner and I'm like, you know, that thing I said to you yesterday, that was asshole thing to say. I was like, was it light? I'm like, I'm going to go empower him to look at the energy of what I'm saying. Cause sometimes I lie. <laughs> Dude, was it light? And he looked at it. He's like, no, I was like, I lied. I do that sometimes. And I'm sorry. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> it was bugging me so much because oh I was like, oh, me. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so like we have all this power and we use it for creative, generative things. And we also destroy others and ourselves with it sometimes. So, so fun. I forget where I was going with that. But you said something really great. Um, this. Um, <sighs> Yeah, well, trying to go backwards is like impossible. Yeah, yeah right. it really is today. I'm like, I'm already on to like 10 more topics. Oh, I think you were talking about like, do so we don't ask it. Oh, you turn, okay. We don't ask just one question, like one and done. Right. You know? Yeah. It's a Here's the question you ask, and then that's all you have to ask. Yeah. No, actually, the point is the key to the freedom. So, this is one of the keys to freedom is living as the question. The freedom comes from staying engaged. And that's actually what living as a question is. Like mm -hmm. you're just mm -hmm. engaged with all energies. One of the things we talk about in the Access Foundation class is like, can you ever, if you're present, can you ever have a boring life? <laughs> and so when you look at presence, presence is like, this is an example of presence is like feeling your feet on the floor, you know, lowering all your barriers, feeling your hands on your body, and now pushing your head out and not thinking now yeah. you're present now does it require you to sit there and put your hands up? no you can be just as present walking on your phone and everything mm -hmm. but most of us take ourselves out of being present we yeah anytime you're judging and thinking worrying doubting stressing anxiety any of those i don't knowing yeah 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 you're that's you not being present and that's really how we're taught to function mm -hmm. so what this does is this returns us to being present and really going, what else is possible? And the moment you truly ask that, you are engaged. Now you, the being, have engaged with all the elementals and the molecules in the universe, and everything is like, Whoop. it's like stands alert. As soon as you're there, all of the molecules go. Rrr. And this is quantum physics. Like you can go mm -hmm. study this. Like what the bleep mm -hmm. do we know anyway is a great documentary. Um, a happy yeah. pocket full of money is this incredible um, resource on explaining like the science behind this. This is how molecules function. So the moment we become a question, which is like mm -hmm, all molecules go mm -hmm, and you observe it and it changes on your behalf. It just doesn't show up the way you think because that's not how molecules function. Yeah. They. Yeah. No, I was just, I was going to say, I have like, I'm getting so much more awareness of like how I was functioning this time with house shopping like five yeah. years ago we purchased a condo in Chicago and um I remember just at that time all I had was like is this light or is this heavy is this light or is this heavy I didn't really have the access to the questions and so although it's still but, clean, but I want to stop you there because that's a great tool <laughs> I know, I know. That's also really great. That's a great That's show. So don't just stop that. <laughs> it's true. It's where I started, though, right? It's kind of like the set. But it's I, everything. I yeah, mean, can yeah. I pause there for a second? Yes, because please, you go. just rolled right over it as if it was nothing. And and I think that start there, everybody. Yeah. You always know what's light and what's heavy, but we're not taught to put our attention on it. So like even this mm -hmm. morning conversation, he was in the shower. That's why I keep pointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I walked in there and I was like, you know, that thing I said to you, was that light or heavy? He hadn't looked at it yet. Yeah. So as soon as he looked at it, he's like, that was heavy. I'm like, yeah, I lied. But so epic tool. Yeah. Next week. Light and heavy. Then, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. So I guess I was just kind of um, seeing it, the evolution of the process and how, how I was kind of just like more green with the energy. And then this time just being able to have more access to when it shifted 
like Subtle, in between the subtleties mm -hmm. yeah versus being like this one's light okay it's yeah. light we're good you yeah. know lena i was i'm just i have more access to being more questioned now from practicing it and i also like we I, I i've been in a lot of talk to the entities classes in this last month a lot of energetic classes actually and one of the things i'm recognizing is that and i'm putting this in the book also that um light energies are subtle energies they're not they're not obvious they're mm -hmm. subtle, they're feathery. Yeah. And so if you look at even like how psychology works or the mental health field works, we put all our attention on the heavy, dense energies. It's like if there's sadness, depression, anxiety, you know, nervous system dysregulation, that's yeah. where our attention goes. Yeah. So we're, we train ourselves every single day and we're taught to not like the feathery energies actually just aren't even talked about really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, kind of how we just like dismiss it. I was like, well, yeah, just light heavy. I don't know. I was you like, know? no, 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 go back. <laughs> That's the beginning. <laughs> but it is so subtle because it's just like, it is a whisper and I get it, you know, if we are not mm, calm enough or present enough to tune into it, then we'll just totally miss it. It'll fly yeah. right by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it's like adding these, and it's like adding to your world people that are actually talking about this also because mm -hmm. like if you look out in the world the only things that are being shown on tv you you don't have a television series without drama you cannot have a movie without a conflict you know like yes. every single thing that we are just surrounded by is these are the presentation of dense energies and the resolution of dense energies we are very yeah. rarely shown something that's like hey if you pay it, if you stimulate and you pay attention to the subtle energies, you will have access to a world of possibility most people around you don't have. Yeah. So it's like in your business, like as you're creating in the world, like how do you use this? How do you lead yourself forward with subtle energies when most of the people out there are like, do this dense thing and this feeling thing and this conclusion and you'll get these results? You know, what is that practice? Look at the problem and fix it. Fix uh, present, the problem. present the solution to the problem and the pain that people are in so that they yeah. can get that you are the solution to their problem. And I'm not saying like none of that is effective at creating sales because God knows we bought tons of stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really just looking at like um, kind of what's the world you want to live in personally? What's the world that you are creating in the world, you know, and what's going to be the pathway or the way forward with instituting that, actualizing that world in the world mm -hmm. as a business, as a, as a living, as a, as an impact, you know? Mm -hmm. okay, Someone asked to explain light and heavy. Does that sound like a next show maybe potentially? Yes. I, I haven't we done one. We can do another one. Light I, and heavy part two. We, yeah. But yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Since we'll yeah. like say different things this time about it. Okay. We'll do that next week. You guys we will do all light and heavy stuff. Well, we'll talk mm -hmm. about it next week. Yeah. Better. Yeah. It's the first, um, it's, it's the first tool access consciousness tool that I was ever given in an email even. Mm. And, and so I can tell that story in totality like next week, but it's like kind of one of the very first thing that access gives you. And it just starts with like, Hey, Hey, what's true for you is light. And what's not isn't. And the other stuff's heavy and that's not true. So when you start to really apply that to every single thing in your life, I, what I found is like 99% of what I had thought was real and true for me simply wasn't, which leads you to a question like, mm. oh, that's not true for me. What is that was so empowering because for me, it was always about like, well, if someone else says something, then they must be right. Not what do I know? What's light? What's heavy? And now it's just so different because then when I hear someone, when normally I would go into like, they're right, they're right. I'm like, that doesn't feel good. Like, okay, that's not true for me. What else could I choose? You know, that just stabbed me. Maybe that's not true. <laughs> Ow. Instead of trying to find out where they're right and I'm wrong, I think mm -hmm. I'm just going to leave that right there on the shelf. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And walk that away. is a whole show. My human self. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. So your your business program starts this week, yeah? Oh my gosh. Well, it start. I'm having a free taster on the right. 19th, so you can sign up. Link in my bio. Um, it's an EFC taster, so you can kind of get a little vibe. We're going to talk a lot about like using questions in business and kind of starting to follow the energy, so you get an idea of that. So we have a taster, and then we start next week. Awesome. And if you guys want more access consciousness, like full on just an access class on business, I have a intro class on May 25th called crafting your hustle. No empire. 
um, right. crafting your empire. And, and then right after that in June, I have a four day business done different masterclass with all access consciousness mm -hmm. processes and tools. And then right after that, I'll be starting a six month mastermind. So there's I'm like, like busy at all. No, I don't. No. Why be busy when you could just be ridiculous? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cool. And so you guys get to kind of come discover like what's going to add to your life. And this is where I'd use a question. That's all. Mm -hmm. Look at the yep. different choices and go, hey, what will my life be like in five years if I choose this? And yes. get a sense of each of the things. And that's going to start to teach you and substantiate in your world your ability with energy. Such a gift. So mm -hmm. love it. Yeah. All Until right. next time. Until next time. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye.